Sam Smyers here. Today, I want to talk about seven tips on how to make reggaeton. And I'm going to be going through my song, Robota. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. If you're truly looking to improve your mixing, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is a full online mixing course that I created that will show you everything that I know about mixing and it will help you make amazing sounding records from the comfort of your own home that you can be proud to share with your friends, family, and your fans. I'll put a link down below for you to check that out. I'm gonna be going through my song, Robota, and this is a song that I made with Dennis Fernando. This is in the vibe of J Balvin, Major Lazer, DJ Snake, that type of reggaeton. The first tip that I want to share with you is to change up your drum pattern every four to eight bars. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play for you about 12 bars of my song, and you'll hear how I change up the drum pattern three different times. Now that was at least 12 bars and I was actually going into the next section and you can tell that every four bars or so I'm changing up the drum beat. Even though I'm using the same melody, you hear that flute melody, I'm changing up the drum beat to add some interesting elements to the song and to keep it moving. Especially with the reggaeton, the drums are very, very important. So you wanna keep them moving and keep changing them and keep them interesting by changing up the different types of drums that you're using, maybe change up some patterns, switch out some snares, some hi-hats, add some really cool fills in there. And I think doing that will keep your song and your structure of your song very interesting as you might be repeating a sample over and over and over. If you just keep changing that drum beat up, then it will maintain the listener's interest throughout the entire two and a half, three minutes of your song. Tip number two is to make your drums really loud. You want them to hit really hard on club speakers and you want them to really maintain the groove of your track. Let's check out these reggaeton or these dembo kicks here. These are probably going to be the loudest elements in my mix. I'll zoom in and let's go ahead and solo these. Let's play all the drums together. Let's go ahead and play the whole mix together and listen to that reggaeton kick or that Tom Dembo kick sound. That's basically the loudest element in the mix there. And then after that stops, you have that really loud Tom sound as he's singing and there's this breakdown. So actually make your drums really loud in the mix and also the percussion, make that pretty loud because that's important to adding the groove to your song. And that can help people get on the dance floor and dance to your track. Tip number three is to pan your drums. If we check out this reggaeton kick sound, then you can see that I'm actually panning it to the left a little bit, but that's because it's actually leaning toward the right. And then I have this one beneath it that I'm layering it with, and it actually sounds pretty stereo. A lot of times when you have a kick in the mix, you will have it in the center, but for this style of kick or this tom, I wanted it to be pretty wide. And if you actually listen to other reggaeton songs, sometimes it might be a bit off center in the mix. Sometimes it's a bit to the left, or sometimes it's a bit to the right. And in my case, I think I have it hand a bit to the left. Let's check out the drums in the drop and I want to show you how I spread them out in the stereo field. We have a timbale here, which I have panned to the right. I have a snare fill here that's panned toward the right as well. I have some claps here that are in the center. 
And then we can go to my tops here. Let's go ahead and solo these tops. I've got this Dembo hat pan to the left. I have this hat rhythm pan to the right. And then I have this ride that's a bit toward the right as well. And basically doing this type of panning can add width to your track, especially because your track is going to be made up of mostly drums and reggaeton. You wanna pan these elements to various positions in your stereo field so that your track has width. In this particular track, I really only have a few instruments. So panning the elements of the drums really helps add that stereo width to the track and helps it feel bigger. Tip number four is to build your beat around a sample. Think about how DJ Snake used that flute sample in Taki Taki or how Willie William used that vocal chop in Mi Gente. Those were very simple sounds and they were just repeated throughout the entire track. And that's what I did in my song as well. What I did is I found this flute sample here, which you can actually find this on Splice. Let's go ahead and play this for you. I'll solo it. And that sample essentially repeats throughout the entire track. For the drop, all I do is I raise it up an octave. So you could basically do something like that where you find that sample, that simple melody, and then build your drums around that melody and that will allow you to make your drums more complex with some complex rhythms if you have something very simple to build them around. Tip number five is to keep your bass simple and allow it to complement the drums. Let's go ahead and check out the bass in this track. You can see that I only have bass in a few sections of the track and the bass is just going to be an 808 here. Let's go ahead and solo this and I'll loop it so you can hear how it sounds. Pretty simple in that part. And then for the drop, let's check out the bass in the drop and we can hear how that sounds. All the bass is doing there is it's really just complementing the kick of that drop. And I'm just making sure that that bass is adding to the groove of the drums and not really getting in the way of them. For the verses, I actually don't even have any bass in here. What you can hear though is those tom hits which add some bass. And what you can do is if you have toms like that, you can add some sub frequencies to those toms to pitch them in tune with your track. Let me go ahead and solo that sub there. And you can hear where I'm basically taking those notes and I'm changing the notes and I'm also taking that one long note and I'm pitching it down so that it adds some tuning to those toms. And I do the same thing over here. So what you could do is you could actually layer your toms or your kicks with a sub layer to fit them in tune with your song, or you could pitch them to try to get them to sound in tune with your song. Tip number six is to create ear candy with ad-libs, vocal shouts, or vocal chops. Let's go ahead and check out the drop here. And I actually have this vocal atmosphere underneath the flute. And that's adding some nice ear candy, which you wouldn't really hear in the full mix. Let me go ahead and solo the vocals for you. Rebota, 
So there you can hear a lot of vocal delays going on, some shouts, some yas, different elements to really add ear candy to the mix. Here are some delays here. Let's go ahead and check these out. Here are some vocal throws here. Here are some yas. Here's some reverby robotas. And then I've got some shouts here. So I think if you do ear candy like that, where you have vocal ad libs, shouts, you maybe chop some vocals up, or if you're working with a vocalist, have them add some yas or shouts to the track, then you can really put them in and add some nice energy to your song. Tip number seven is to remake popular reggaeton tracks. What you can do is take a popular reggaeton song that you like, put it into your Ableton session, and then map it out, figure out this is the section where the drums changes, this is the type of drums they're using, this is the rhythms that they're using, and just mapping everything out and trying to replicate what they're doing will actually help you a lot whenever you go to make your reggaeton track. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put a reggaeton song into a session and then use these markers here and mark out the different sections of the track. And then I'll put in some hi-hats and see if I can figure out the hi-hat rhythms because a lot of times those will add to a nice groove to the song. Figuring out how those change throughout the course of a track will help you implement interesting type of grooves to your song. And then also remaking popular reggaeton tracks will help you create a collection of drum sounds to use. You'll start to learn the types of snares that popular reggaeton tracks use or the kicks that they use. A lot of times they're always going to be the same sound. And once you start remaking these tracks, then you'll realize that it's going to be, oh, this is the same kick that was used in this song or that song. And it will help you determine what to use whenever you go to make your own track. And this is a good way to use reference tracks is just remake parts of them and see if you can get the sounds to sound as close to the original track as you can. And then once you do that a couple times, then try to go and make your own song using what you learn from remaking those popular reggaeton tracks. I hope all those tips were helpful. And if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.